Hey everyone, welcome back to SG Carmine. So let's talk EVs. So you've probably heard from people, people like us, about the benefits of electric vehicles. So it's better for an environment. Some people like the way they drive, I do. But perhaps I think the key benefit of an EV is that it is cheaper to run than a petrol car. So the idea of course being that electricity is cheaper than petrol. However, is it actually cheaper to buy and own an EV? Well, to be very honest, it's actually a little bit difficult to do an actual apples to apples comparison. I think precisely because many EVs don't necessarily have a direct IC counterpart. And in the few circumstances that such a model exists, typically the EV variant will be a little bit more expensive than the ICE variant. There is, however, one exception, these. So this is the BMW X3 and this is the BMW iX3 and they are, of course, twins of each other, right? This is the petrol model and this is the electric model. Specifically though, this is the X3 xDrive 20i M Sport and that is the iX3 M Sport Impressive. And the reason why I've picked these specific variants is for one very simple reason. These are priced exactly the same. Yes, I know no one realistically is going to drive as much as I'm going to drive in one day, but this will simulate roughly about five days of driving based on LTA's stats on the average amount of distance covered by the typical Singaporean driver. And Google, please sort your stuff out. You need to allow more than 10 locations on navigation. So unfortunately, we are going to be manually navigating with the map I've drawn out, and that's why we have map in the back seat. And the total distance we're going to cover is 260 kilometers. Okay, it's 10 a.m. I'm going to reset the values and get going. A little bit about what I'm doing, right? So I'm obviously right now driving the X3 and I've already plotted out a road that covers about 263 km. So the idea being that I'm not here doing an eco challenge or anything. The whole idea is I just want to clock mileage and I'm going to drive this car as I normally would. So I tend to have a slightly lighter foot, but I'm not trying to be eco. I'm just going to be normal driving. I am generally keeping to speed limits, but you know, I'm going as fast as the cars on the road. So the idea being, this is how people normally drive, I suppose. And that's what I want to try to simulate and clock that mileage so that we have a good data set to work with. Of course, there are going to be variables on the road as far as road conditions, weather, so on and so forth. I cannot control all of that, obviously, but what I've tried to do to remove as many of the variables as possible is that I've planned the exact same route. I'm going to start at the exact same time. I'm going to do it on the exact same day, but one week apart because I cannot drive two cars in at the same time. Hopefully, the weather stays the same on both days. Today, it's a little bit cloudy and traffic at this point at least looks pretty good. At least, you know, not heavy traffic. And main thing is I'm just going to pray no rain, no accidents. You know, everything else, you know, let's assume Singaporeans are fairly consistent in where they're going on a Tuesday or in, you know, successive weeks. Now, a little bit about the car. So, it is set up in its most, I guess, average setting. So the aircon is on, the recirculation is on, the aircon set at 22 degrees, and on the auto lowest fan speed, the car is going to be in comfort mode throughout this drive. And I have actually two people on board with me. The reason why I have two people is because we have one producer and I also have a navigator on board. That is because Google Maps is a little bit of a pain. I can't really adjust the route to the one I want because obviously Google Maps is going to guide me on the shortest, quickest route, which means I'm just going to be driving on highways all the way, right? And that's not the idea here. The idea here is to have a nice, good mixture of roads. So I did have to manually plot it out and Google Maps will not let me nav with that map that I custom made. So therefore, I have someone to tell me to turn left and right as and when I need to. Whatever that I'm doing in this particular X3, I'm going to be doing the exact same way next week in the iX3. Same people, same settings, same route, same driver. Hopefully, same weather, same traffic. We have covered 71.4 km. And currently right now, my consumption figure in this X3 is 7.2 liter per 100 km. So that translates to around 14. So it's 
obviously going to be a little bit on the higher side um, but that's also taking into consideration that traffic has been pretty good and we've done a long one long highway stretch so my average speed is 41.7 and time check it's now 11.48 so just before 12 so we're going to have a lunch and then we'll move off again at probably 1 p.m. So it's one o'clock now, just heading off from our lunch stop and we've got a lot more of this journey to go. We've got supposedly 190 km more to drive, so that's another good four or five hours. So let's try to bang out these kilometers quickly. Okay, so we're now here at Tampines AK and we are doing a 10 minute mandatory stop and the car is on, the car is idling. And I guess this is to kind of simulate, you know, your situations where you're idling with your friends and also because I needed to pee, so this is our toilet break as well. So yeah, we're just doing a 10 minute little break and at 1.57, we'll move off again. Okay, so we're now on the PIE trying to get into city and one of the, I guess, traffic variables have kicked in. I am now doing 7km per hour, so this is obviously eating into our fuel economy a little bit but thankfully we're not going to be stuck in this jam too long so we managed to sort of get out of the midst of it but yeah you know that's peak hour traffic on most weekdays going home so you know that is as real as it gets Okay, so we're getting close to the end of our journey. I'm at 253 km and we're just doing the very last couple of camps. We're already in the Serangoon area. And overall, I mean, it's been a long day. Currently, consumption stands at 8.1 liters per 100 km. We'll obviously get a clearer number when we're back in the office. And just for some reference, my average speed throughout has been 38.9 km per hour. Overall, you know, I think traffic today has been pretty good. Didn't get into any major jams. Towards the end, so it's now 6.11pm, obviously I made the route a little bit more long with it than I needed to be just to get into some, you know, traffic and you can see around me it's getting heavy and everyone's going home, I'm just going to office. But yeah, that is the X3 drive more or less done for the day. We'll have to do this again in a week's time with the iX3, so cut to that. One week later. Okay, it's Wednesday once again, it's 10 o'clock. I'm gonna reset all the settings here. Drive, let's go. So obviously, I'm still in a BMW. However, this is the iX3, not the X3. And we're gonna just redo every single thing that I did exactly one week ago. So I'm just heading out now. And again, I'm just gonna drive it normally as how I did last week and we'll see how things go. As far as today's weather is concerned, it's quite a bit hotter than last week. We'll see how this weather holds up and traffic situation, I don't know. We'll see, we'll see what happens. But yeah, let's go. Now, just like the X3, I have set up the iX3 in what I suppose is its most average setting, right? So. I'm just going to be in comfort mode the entire time, no Eco Pro, no trying to eke out extra range or that kind of thing. As far as regen, I've just put the car in the medium regen setting that is an adaptive one that I personally prefer, but you know, I'm just leaving it medium in its most normal setting, I suppose. Now, aircon, 22 degrees, auto at its lowest blower setting, and yeah, that's about it, right? The car is as close to the X3 as I can set it up to be. And I'm just gonna drive and you know, hopefully don't run into any major traffic issues. Now, one thing is range. Obviously, it's something you talk about in an EV. I have on the clock here, 273. It's a little bit lower than it was this morning because we sat around for a little bit. But it should be enough to finish the 256 km that we did last week and that we are gonna do again today. All right, so we're just about reaching our lunch spot and our lunch stop over is at Old Airport Road. And as far as traffic today, I think traffic has been a little bit more than last week. So it's now 11.49, I think we reached a little bit earlier last week. But you know, generally still quite good. No major jams, no accidents, no big holdups, just you know, general day-to-day -day traffic. 
And yeah, it's been a nice smooth drive. Uh, we've covered 71.6 km, so that sounds about right. And as for what we're doing for consumption, we're now, according to the car, at 16.5 kilowatt hour per 100 km. We'll do the math subsequently. But yeah, that's the morning part of the drive done. So just five more hours of driving after this. We're gonna find a parking lot, have lunch, and then we'll carry on again after lunch. Okay, it's one o'clock. We're all back in the car and we're gonna get going. So five more hours of driving, let's go. Okay, so we're here at IKEA now. It's 1.38 p.m. and we're gonna do a 10 minute stop. So exactly like what we did with the X-ray, we're gonna be here stationary for 10 minutes with the car idling and on. This being an EV, I have to be seated here because you know if I get out, the car will automatically turn off. So I'm just gonna sit here for 10 minutes and we are here simulating some of the idling situations you encounter, right? Whether you're picking up your kids, you know, waiting for someone to grab your food from the coffee shop, that kind of thing. So yes, in 10 minutes time, we're gonna head off and continue with our journey. Okay, so I'm finally back at the office after a pretty cold and wet afternoon. So we've done seven hours and 15 minutes of driving. Um, total distance 257.7 km. So a little bit more than last week, probably a little bit of calculation differences and stuff like that, but we've driven the exact same route. So um, as far as efficiency is concerned, I'm doing 17.3 kilowatt hour per 100 km, according to what the car is telling me. We'll do the sum subsequently. However, if I do add up the numbers on the dashboard, I would be able to get 368 km of range on a full tank, which I think is honestly pretty impressive. Um, one other number to note is probably the fact that I've averaged 37.3 km per hour, so that's a little bit lower than last week. And I think that's really to do with the road conditions. So it's been wet the whole afternoon and, you know, generally a little bit more traffic and, you know, in wet weather, traffic tends to slow down a little bit. So yeah, those are the numbers. It's now time for me to go do the sums, figure out the numbers and come to you with a conclusion. Now, let's look at the numbers. So, purchase cost with the X3, you're gonna have a DP of $29,300. With the iX3, even though it has the exact same list price, the DP is actually a little bit higher and that's to do with the way VS and EAI rebates work. And here, it comes up to $30,600 a year, which is about 5% more. And that's just the reality of where things stand with the way the rebates work. Now, Road tax. So with the X3, the road tax is $1,210, whereas with the iX3, it's actually $1,847. And that's because the iX3 has quite a bit more output. And that's how road tax is calculated at this point in time. And that is a 53% difference. Now, when it comes to insurance, the X3 here from Sing Life is uh, valued at 1573.94, whereas the iX3 has insurance cost of $2,392.02. And again, that's about a 52% difference. And I think this slightly speaks to the fact that EVs are still quite new and I think insurance companies are still trying to figure them out, right? So, so far, it's all not looking too good for the iX3. However, I think where you obviously claw back a lot of value and money with an EV is in your running costs. So, based on the Average annual mileage of a typical Singapore driver, 17,500 km based on LTA's data. The X3 with the consumption figures that we've gotten comes up to about 22 cents cost per km and that brings us to a total cost per year of 3,955. Whereas the iX3 cost per km is just a little bit over 9 cents and that actually means that the total cost per year is actually 1,610 and that is almost 60% less. So obviously, you're going to save a lot of money driving the EV over the ICE. However, when we put all those numbers together, I think the result is slightly surprising. Based on my exact calculations, it's actually 1% more expensive to run and own an EV compared to an ICE. So what have we learned from this little experiment that we've done? Well, the numbers don't lie. 
buying and owning an EV is actually a little bit more expensive compared to an identically priced ICE car. Yes, this is just one model and obviously the numbers will change from model to model, but I think there are some sort of bigger picture conclusions that we can learn, right? Obviously, running cost is cheaper with an EV compared to ICE, but I think the reality is that sticker price is still an issue. Um, most EVs tend to be more expensive than their direct IC counterparts. And as we've recognized the way the rebates work with your insurance and road tax, it is actually not particularly conducive and encouraging for drivers to pick an EV over an IC today. Will things change? I don't know, I hope so. And I think things are slowly and steadily moving in that direction. But at this particular point in time, can you make the financial case that you should go electric over a petrol car? Well, the truth is not yet. So thanks for watching. What do you think? Are you ready to go electric yet? Will that 1% make a difference to you? Let us know in the comments section below. Do also like, share and subscribe to our channel. And of course, hit the notification bell so you will be alerted of all our upcoming videos. Also, we're on TikTok, so find us at SG Karma. That's all I have. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Look, look, and then look, look. Quite right, if people stop down, they're waiting for me to come out. The fact that, you know, people... Ooh. I must turn somewhere, right, Matt? Um... Oh.